event called the World Government Summit. This is about 5,000 people from governments across the world that come together and talk about policy, technology, change, disruption, um, efficiency, and how governments of the future should run and, um, and showcase examples of uh, what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Uh, a lot of thought leadership. We've had amazing speakers here this week, uh, the last couple of days actually, uh, from uh, speaker uh, 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 Tony Robbins. Uh, we've had um, some really influential and big entrepreneurs uh, and people of, uh, who, who are doing world work across the world to, to change something within governments, uh, across the private sector uh, and whatnot. Overall, it's been uh, pretty incredible. Uh, I'm launching my documentary film, film uh, Blockchain City, uh, today, and so that's an incredible uh, amount of excitement from my part because uh, it's taken a while, it's taken the last 12 months to, to put that together and, uh, and finally here we are uh, doing a Middle East uh, release of the film and launching it at this public sector forum. Um, I want to talk about, in this episode today, I want to talk about some of the things that governments should be aware of uh, when it comes to technology transformation or, or, or leadership and, and figuring out the direction of where you should be headed. Now, the United Arab Emirates is a great example. I'm here, and um, why not talk about some of the things that they're doing here that could have a tremendous amount of impact on how we see governments, uh, governance in general. Uh, let's talk about technology, the emergence of, uh, let's say, Internet of Things, blockchain, artificial intelligence. Uh, these are all technologies we all hear about everywhere, uh, from you know United States to Japan to Korea, um, Latin America, everywhere you go, these technologies are changing the way we do things. Uh, one of the best things about uh, this region here, though, is that uh, at a government level, these technologies are actually being implemented in a way that um, the Western world is still uh, trying to trying to cope up with. Uh, a lot of that has to do with um, with leadership. A lot of that has to do with the ability to scale. A lot of that has to do with um, the direction in which these countries go, uh, and in which direction generally uh, countries countries go because of changes in government, changes in policy making, and so on. Um, the United Arab Emirates is uh, the world's only country that has a Minister of Artificial Intelligence. And that's a very interesting portfolio because it just get, gives to, um, uh, you know, it just helps understand the focus of the government in terms of understanding change, in terms of uh, understanding where things are headed. And uh, the Minister of Artificial Intelligence's uh, mandate and portfolio is to enable emerging technologies, bring people on board uh, from, from a policy-making perspective, uh, bring them together and help shape not just the policy of uh, the UAE here, but, but talk about things that influence the rest of the world. I think that's a great example. Um, there's other things that are happening here as well, in addition to artificial intelligence. Of course, the region is rich in energy, uh, with, with oil being one of the, you know, one, one of the most important uh, commodities uh, that are generated from this region. But, but the dependence on oil is not something that's a future scenario as far as things look here. Uh, there's a lot of um, work being done on sustainability. Uh, and, and changing how we can utilize technology to do things better. Uh, there's a smart city not too far from here, maybe 70 kilometers from here, called Mazdar. And Mazdar is a smart city that's uh, that, you know techno a technological marvel. It's uh, they've got a ton of Internet of Things enabled in there, uh, and a lot of plans to make it one of the top smart cities in the world. Um, what else is going on? Uh, let's talk about blockchain. Uh, my documentary blockchain is based on uh, the steps that governments are taking worldwide on enabling blockchain technology and creating value. And that's literally it. Uh, one of the biggest stories or one of the pivotal stories or cornerstone stories in the film is uh, the story of Dubai. Because Dubai is the world's uh, first country and the only country that has taken a very strong stance on, um, on blockchain. And, and actually by the year 2020, all government transactions will be on the blockchain um, uh, uh, blockchain technology. What does that really mean? What do you, what do you mean by uh, everything will be on blockchain or all transactions will be on, on blockchain? So here are some of the things uh, that are happening. Um, as part of that, blockchain is going to replace the traditional uh, database systems, uh, processes, workflows at the back end so that there isn't a lot of repetition. 
uh, so that there is uh, cost savings as a result of going paperless, as a result of capturing information uh, across the board where it needs to be captured uh, so that it's not duplicated and essentially create efficiency across the board within government functions. Uh, for citizens, this means faster services, instant services, uh, permit registrations will be fast, um, healthcare, access to healthcare and education will be fast, and all of these things will be seamless, fast, efficient, uh, unprecedented level of uh, uh, efficiency uh, as has never been seen before. And so the government here has really embarked on this project of enabling blockchain by the year 2020 and having everything based on blockchain. That that's a big thing and uh, trust me governments across the world are looking at Dubai as an example of a country that will uh, do uh, this uh, implementation and really show kind of show the light to other countries across the world now if you know about the city of Barcelona Barcelona is amazing uh, it's an internet of things powered city it's got a lot of automation a lot of technology um, garbage cans are sensor enabled so that uh, garbage collection routes can be optimized um, street lighting has Wi-Fi connectivity uh, the city is uh, very efficient in terms of uh, the infrastructure piece and how technology and Internet of Things and connectivity has changed that in the last 10-15 years. A really, really great example uh, of a great city. Dubai, on the other hand, is on a different pathway to create efficiency through blockchain. And it's on a path to, to make that happen through, through another technology, blockchain. Uh, blockchain is also an enabler for trust. And uh, the idea behind uh, creating trust through blockchain means that you're able to not worry about the fact whether transactions are real, whether uh, fraud is happening or not. So imagine a world where it's guaranteed that nothing is fraudulent. I was speaking to some people yesterday uh, and there's so many different examples of blockchain being able to um, cut fraud in many ways. Here's an example. In the world, uh, in the United States, the insurance fraud is about a $40 billion industry, $40 billion of fraud happened in the United States uh, when it comes to insurance. Now that's a lot of money that's costing insurance companies uh, in order to keep themselves running. Now what's happening with, uh, with blockchain or what can potentially happen with blockchain is that as things go on the blockchain, as insurance companies start working with governments, start working with the private sector to have uh, personal information uh, attached to blockchains and of course we'll talk about privacy uh, in, in, a, in a minute because that's a big question but as we end up utilizing information on blockchain and sharing that information what it's going to do is that it's going to eliminate the fact that people can fake things that people can create things on their own they can create fake paper trails none of that will exist anymore because now in order to verify something you can just tap into that certain blockchain database verify information uh, and and figure out that hey this is this is real here's an example uh, imagine that the day you're born or let's say when you started going to school or university or college, you, all your educational credentials were stored in some kind of a blockchain um, a, a technology that 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 was that would be on forever. Like imagine universities, schools, educational institutions, everybody shared one single blockchain um, uh, that where everybody would put that information about you. So you did your degree, it would be there. You, you passed another credential, it would stay there. Now when you go and look for a job and you uh, want to find employment, you go to your employer and you say, hey, I've done all these, all these degrees, I've done all these certificates, I have all these credentials, and in order to verify them, I don't carry paper paper documents anymore and you don't need to call my university anymore because now you can tap into this specific blockchain technology that all the universities in the world share and you can you can verify what I've done in a matter of seconds it's not going to take days anymore you don't I don't need to get transcripts for my university anymore and that's the power of blockchain all that time maybe a week or two that that you take to verify things is reduced to mere minutes that's just one example of within the education industry and how this information sharing through blockchain can change that. Now you might ask, why is that not happening right now? 
uh, why aren't we sharing information right now and why aren't different people sharing information right now? And the reason for that is that information today is sits in different silos. The education industry, uh, universities sit in their own databases. They have information in, in their own systems. Uh, they don't share this information with, let's say, your healthcare provider. Uh, your government doesn't share information with your employer. And there's all these different silos of information that have emerged in the last uh, 15, 20, 30 years that um, that have been great so far, nothing against IT, nothing against technology, but it's not the case of if it ain't broken, don't fix it. The problem is things are inefficient. And just because they've been working so far doesn't mean there's no need for efficiency. Imagine that you could uh, really create a better life for yourself if you had if you had to go to work for just one hour and you would be paid the same amount of money. Wouldn't you do that? Uh, wouldn't you want to be more efficient in your life, in your work, and create value through that means? And that's the idea: is let's let's utilize the power of technology in a way where it was never done before. Let's create unprecedented uh, automation and efficiency because we can. And, uh, and you can't really fight the, the war uh, with, with efficiency because I think that's what we need to do as human beings is create a better world where we can do, 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 do different things. Um, if we didn't go for that goal, we would never, had, we would never have had computers or cars or, or aeroplanes. Um, and that's kind of what's happening within blockchain in general. So once, uh, so in Dubai, uh, the, the whole focus is around creating efficiency in government, saving costs, uh, adding value to faster services, more efficiency through services to citizens, uh, residents, and so on and so forth. And this translates into a lot of efficiency overall, a lot of cost saving overall. And I think everybody across the world should, should really learn from this example. Um, I, my documentary is a perfect example of where you should be going to, to watch it. It's called Blockchain City. And you can go to blockchaincitymovie.com to, to learn more and watch a preview. Uh, and we're doing screenings across the world. I think we're going to be doing uh, screenings as of today in about uh, 22 countries around the world in 2019. And um, that's our goal, that's our target for this year. So we are going to be in many, many different uh, venues and places this year. If you want a screening near you, or in a city near you, in your venue, in your organization, do reach out, just go to the website and fill up, fill up the form. Uh, so the film is a great example of uh, understanding the bigger picture of blockchain and how governments across the world are using it, why are they doing it, and what, what does the private sector or what do some key industries think about this whole emergence uh, of blockchain and why are they going for it. And it's, it's, it's a great example, it's got some great stories in there, some great narratives, some great people who lent us their time, energy uh, and, uh, and expertise to help understand uh, where we're headed. Uh, there's also uh, the idea of uh, leadership within governments and uh, you know how governments need to be more uh, in tune with what the newer generation is capable of doing, unlocking human potential, uh, facilitating the idea that you can create positive change and you can, uh, you can lead change. And there's a, there was a great example yesterday, uh, the Prime Minister of, uh, of Pakistan, Imran Khan, was here as well. And he had a he had a, a plenary session where he, he he talked about his journey of becoming the prime minister of Pakistan from being a professional cricketer for for almost 20 years and how he became a politician and what led to that that dream and that goal that he had to to become a politician and what fueled that. Now behind the story of of how he came up came up to be. Uh, I want to tell you about the need for efficiency in a country like Pakistan that has been, uh, you know, over the last couple of decades has been uh, decimated and, 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 and really torn down in terms of infrastructure. There was a lot of corruption. There was um, a, a huge amount of mistakes with, uh, with governance. And that has led to the challenge and the problem that, that the citizens of Pakistan are not getting what they need. They don't have adequate health care, they're not being cared for, they don't have good roads, they don't have good buildings, and there's a huge opportunity to change that. So that's the bottom line. As with many other countries in the developed world, there's an opportunity 
to change things, to change infrastructure, to make things better so that citizens, taxpayers, uh, residents uh, can have a better quality of life, the countries do better economically, and, uh, and technology can be a great enabler to do that. Um, one of the examples that, uh, that, that uh, again, talking about Pakistan, is, uh, is an app that they've uh, created, and that app, it's a very ordinary thing, but it's so powerful, that, and that app uh, can be used to report uh, different problems that are happening within cities, uh, you've got uh, infrastructure issues, and citizens can report on that, and now government can take all these requests and work on them and fix them, and it could be as simple as fixing a light bulb or, uh, or a, po a pothole or, or, or something else. Um, Back in the day, maybe still in, in the world in many places, this doesn't exist. And uh, governments still function in a very paper format. You go and lodge a complaint and it takes years and years for judiciary to do things, municipalities to do things. So why not use technology as an accelerator to, to create change faster, to create impact faster? Um, and having said that, I think we also need to remember that technology is, is not the end uh, uh, deliverable. Technology is not everything. Technology cannot do everything for you. Uh, there's a huge uh, side of um, the human potential of things. Uh, and uh, having tangible goals and realistic expectations. Now, they say that if you really want to create change, think about the end results and then work your way back to where you are. And technology can really help get to your goals in a very faster way. So if you have a target, if you have a goal uh, in, in a city, in a government, uh, technology can help accelerate that journey and, and make that journey faster. Uh, lawmakers, politicians, everybody needs to work on this together. And that's the, that's the big challenge uh, that we need to address. Uh, so that's been a, it's been a, it's been an emerging, it's been a constant theme uh, through World Government Summit is how do governments make things better. Uh, there's many initiatives that were, uh, that have been uh, launched here since, um, since the last couple of days. Uh, I've been part of something uh, really nice. It's the Government Services uh, Forum where uh, there's a new initiative by the government of UAE uh, to help foster dialogue through uh, examples of success and, and collaboration with other experts on a new platform the government has created. Uh, so I'm, uh, I was, I'm, I'm privileged to be one of the, of the founding members of that. Uh, the Government Services Forum and it's an incredible opportunity for governments across the world to come together and share their expertise and, and share their insights and try and build uh, something together as a next step uh, and to go somewhere else. Um, in the next uh, couple of days, today and tomorrow, predominantly there's uh, a lot more uh, sessions, conversations, discussions uh, around emerging technologies, leadership, psychology, uh, success, and, and, and things that really governments across the world can, uh, can utilize. I encourage you to visit their website at theworldgovernmentsummit.com, uh, check out their sessions, and, uh, and visit my website, uh, world, uh, uh, sorry, uh, visit my film website, blockchaincitymovie.com, and, uh, and check out a preview and, uh, and, and talk to me about screening the film at an event near you. Uh, and and we could uh, we could create that change in a different way. Um, I also believe that we need to change our relationship with technology. We need to change this paradigm uh, of interacting with technology in a different way, uh, in a more friendlier way. And that was the objective of, of shooting the film and, and, and going down that path uh, and trying to figure out what's the best way to tell stories that inspire people for action, what's the best way to tell stories to governments and the private sector so that they look at the value behind how technology can be an enabler rather than explain something really complicated and tricky in, in a set of diagrams and 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 uh, in slides that people just don't understand. Uh, I think the story needs to be told from a perspective of impact. I think if we make impact um, easily translatable, uh, people will listen. People will uh, understand the importance of it and 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 figure out a way to learn more about it. So the documentary is an attempt to help people take the next step 
into, into understanding what technology can do, how it can do it, why it should do it, and why people should be involved in it. Now, uh, this is not the 90s or the 80s uh, where, uh, you know, you had a choice that, you know what, I find computers really difficult and I don't want to use a computer. Uh, or I find technology really difficult and uh, I don't want to use it. You are living in an era uh, where there's technology everywhere, from your home to your car, and if you don't like it, then it's too bad because it's never going to stop. Uh, so the best thing to do and to succeed in this era of, of change and emerging technologies is to make friends with technology, be inspired with technology, go out and be curious to learn more about it, and, and also to, uh, to really accept that you don't know anything or you know very little or you actually are open to ideas. I think that's the biggest challenge we face right now uh, and governments face right now is to, is to say that, hey, we need help. We, need, we want to understand more. We want to learn more. Uh, and I, I believe that if we all come together, uh, the private and the public sector comes together, learners and educators come together, governments across the world come together and, and talk to each other uh, in, in helping understand this change, uh, then things will be different. Things will shape up to be, to be different for all of us. Um, that's the end of my episode uh, this week. I hope uh, you find some useful information uh, and I will uh, do a more of a roundup uh, next week in my, in my next week's episode. Let me know what you think. Give me your comments, suggestions and, uh, and ideas for the next episodes uh, and in terms of what you want to hear from me uh, and we'll talk about all of these things, uh, of all of these things uh, as, as every episode comes out. I love you guys. Thank you for your time, energy, effort and keep yourself uh, busy be curious be uh, you know be uh, be always on, on 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 this thought that there's more out there that you can learn and the and the, and the fact that you could you could help other people overcome some challenges to your skills and your understanding of uh, of things so don't undermine that don't don't give yourself less credit than uh, than you should i love you and i will catch you soon this is ian from dubai talk to you soon